Good afternoon. I'm coming to you again. This from Pilgrim Library and Defiance College campus. This is set up by our audiovisual person, Matt Slowinski. Um, wanted to share with you an overview beginning with the first part of the Hebrew Bible. Now that you've had a chance to see some of the things and maybe integrate them together, I hope to link some of them together and then possibly stir your imagination so that you might indeed um, look at the scriptures differently or find something for yourself in them that is really exceptional to your faith journey. wanted to look first then, and you might want to pause the um, videotape, the YouTube, and stop and get a Bible so that you have the front parts of it, the table of contents, so that you could follow along with me. Um, you're probably familiar with the Hebrew Bible, the first five books being called the Pentateuch, Penta being five, the first five books together, and uh, it's known then as the Torah in Judaism. If you're not familiar with Torah, I'm sure that they have better pictures online of the Torah being opened and read in synagogues, the bricks and mortar of the Jewish faith, so that you could look at the Torah. Um, the Torah being scrolls with the Hebrew first five books written on the scroll by a scribe, fancy term for a writer, and the scribe then um, writes all five books on the scroll. It's very fortunate that those first five books fit well on one scroll so that can be carried. And um, there are other scrolls, but the first five books are the only ones that are officially included in the Torah. Uh, the first one, Genesis. Genesis literally in the Hebrew means in the beginning. So when you see Genesis 1-1, you have the beginning of the scriptures. Now it's thought that this was in oral memory and we, you would look back through hundreds if not a millennia, hundreds of years if not a millennia, to get to a spot where you're talking about um, out of an oral record into a written record. Of course, human beings have had oral stories since the time that they first developed their language, but um, we haven't had it written down, nor was it kept written down from the beginning. Um, we looked at the different types of editors and writers, and as you look at Genesis then, this is not the band, in fact, Phil Collins band got the name from the Bible, not the other way around, of course. The, as you look at Genesis, it has two creation stories. These are both myths according to the terminology that we've used for the class. And by myth, I don't mean something Roman or Greek that just sounds way out there. But the myth is the answer to a human question. And the human question that was answered is, how did the earth begin? And of course, in Genesis 1 and then into chapter 2, I think it's verses it, uh, through 4a, you have the creation story of the seven day creation. Six days God creates and the seventh God rests. Um, if you look into Judaism then, the seventh day is the day of rest beginning at dusk on Friday evening through dusk on Saturday evening. Um, the, the last day of the week, the seventh day, was the rest day. Until the tradition of Christianity through Jesus of Nazareth comes, you have a change to typical worship in Christianity um, on Sunday. Of course, we have Wednesday evenings, uh, morning masses in lots of Roman Catholic churches and Saturday worship. But um, you can think it through. You know the answer of why Christians have changed um, Sunday to the first day of the week being the holy day. Um, in Genesis 1, then, you have a priestly account, very structured. Day 1, this. Day 2, this. On day 3, we have this going on. And you have the perfect number 7 in Judaism. 7, then, continues up to, to, to the current time with gambling, the number 7 is lucky, etc. And you also have this, um, uh, this being a lucky number in in Islam, when they go on the Hajj, they'll do seven times circumambulating, fancy term for going around the Kaaba and Mecca. So seven has a long history of being a perfect number, a, a number which is sacred to the Jews. 
Genesis then goes on to describe and to tell you about those things that are answers to human questions. Who, who were the first children? Who were the first people? Why are there so many languages? What was the first murder? And remember that in discussion of the class, these can be true, 2 plus 2 equals 4. For example, you're seeing me through new technology on YouTube. That should be true, 2 plus 2 equals 4. Whether you're enjoying it or not, or whether you like it or not, or whether you like technology or not, that would be a truth for you. And so the things in Genesis that answer the human questions have a truth for sure. Whether they are true or not, 2 plus 2 equals 4, has to do with your own faith and belief. And I don't de decide for everyone, nor would I have the ability to decide what is true, uh, historically true, or, or could be provable. But the stories themselves and the mythology themselves explain the people's faith that God was in the plan, God was in the works of the people, God was always present. So in Genesis, you continually have answers to human questions and oral rec uh, recorded memories uh, that are told throughout centuries and then written down later. Um, whether these things are, um, are true or not is a matter of faith and belief. You can also come to another number in Genesis, and one of the students had lifted up numbers in Judaism, 40. Of course, um, Noah's, the story of Noah and his family being the people of God, building the ark, and the story, of course, talks about it raining for 40 days and 40 nights. 40 is definitely an important number for scripture scholars. Um, it's not to say that it didn't rain 40 days and 40 nights. I have went, no way of knowing. But when you read the number 40, that's a time of preparation. There was a time of preparation of 40 days and 40 nights before the people came off of the ark. You can think of another Old Testament 40, and whether that was exactly 40 or not would be um, certainly a matter of faith and belief, but the scripture scholars are saying to you, even if it was 39 years and 364 days, it was a time of getting ready. And then in the Greek New Testament, almost all of it written in the Greek, you have another 40. And the scripture scholars will say, um, that's another signal by the editors or writers for you to say, okay, we're getting ready. There's a getting ready, a time of preparation thing here. Um, Genesis then continues with the stories of the patriarchs and matriarchs, and we did the cycles of stories before. We will see other cycles of stories, but I may not do um, a YouTube video of those because the old Hebrew Bible, Old Testament, contains such an amazing amount of incredible material. And we're doing a three-hour class in eight weeks. And to say that I'm not only going to touch the surface is really, really appropriate. Um, if you were in a graduate school class or if we were going to take uh, a part of it, for example, in um, graduate school I took the Duner Mystic History, which is five or six books, then three hours would be appropriate. But know that you're just getting a small part of all the scriptures and a lot of the times you're getting from me some of the favorite things that I've worked with in Christian education and in um, adult and children's education because I thought they were helpful to myself in the faith journey and to students also.